Good afternoon. A great day out here today on F3, full pads. I know the players were, were looking forward to it. The coaches were certainly looking forward to it. And I thought the players did a good job transitioning from the different tempos of practice where we were live and tackling and, and in other periods where we weren't. So I was pleased even when they didn't do it perfectly, they were trying to do it right. And I, I think that's the most important thing right now. We'll get better at it hopefully every day. Questions? Anything on Desmond? Peoples? Desmond's got a hamstring and he's probably going to be another day or two. I don't think it's anything. I think he'll be back no later than the first scrimmage, uh, but it's just a little, little hamstring strain. Would you have uh, normally practiced on the turf field given the condition? We've walked over and I've seen that they, they, it doesn't look like your grass field is in great shape. Is that the reason or this is just normal procedure for you? No, the first five practices, because they're only one a day and they're in the afternoon, I think you know, we've got more than enough room on the turf. And then the, the technology these days, the turf is pretty good to practice on. Now, as we start two days tomorrow, you'll see us up on the grass a little bit. Okay. And uh, as long as it's not too slick, it'll be in the morning, uh, but no later than the afternoon. We'll certainly be on it in the afternoon. Are you disappointed in the condition of it? Because it looks like it's all, it's a little chewed up, the one back there I'm talking about. I don't know That's if you've walked it. It no, I've like been out there. No, it's okay. Uh, we used it a little bit more in the off season than we have in the past, but uh, it's okay. It's certainly more than, than good enough to practice okay. on. We'll be okay. Oh, first day of full pads. What, what stood out to you? Did anything jump out of the question? I'll tell you one player who stood out to me was Stephen Longa. I think he continues to, to flash as you watch it live. It's really tough with the naked eye to see everything that you want to see, but you know, I think he continues to make progress at that middle linebacker spot, and, and that's critical for us. I'm interested to see some of these lesser experienced guys in the back end and see how they performed. Kyle, with with, all, with, he's making all the right calls and everything. Absolutely, that, yes. Uh, with all the changes on the offensive line, how important is it that the one guy coming back is a starter in the same spot as your center? I think that's where it begins. And I think to the offensive line coach, the center is always the most important guy because he's the one who assures that everybody's on the same page. And Batim has really, really done a good job of that this spring. I'm sorry, this summer in training camp. And I'm pleased with his progress. I think he's done a good job. And, and now we got to continue to evaluate that group you know, on film as we go. And, it was good to, to not notice Chris Muller today. So I'm anxious to get the film on and see how well he played, but he certainly didn't stand out as, as somebody who was not playing well. Five days in, do you see any of the freshmen starting to assert themselves a little bit more? Not so much the freshmen, really. I, I guess probably more the, the redshirt freshmen more than anything. They're the ones who are coming on a little bit. Guys like Stephen Longa, Quanzel Lambert, Chris Muller. You know, they're the ones really to me that, that, that are showing up right now, but they may not be the only ones. And it's still a little bit early. I think we got to give them a little bit of time. Are you happy with the way Quanzel is fitting in there at the, the end position? I am. I was looking over at Indy today, and, and he's starting to look like one of them as he goes through the drills, and I think that's the first part. you got to be able to do it in the drills, then you got to be able to do it in, the, in the, the fragmented periods like inside run and scale, and then ultimately you do it in team and then the games. So between Pratt and Peel and Carew, are you confident you have enough guys who can go over the middle and make some tough catches and complement the... Coleman and the Agadosi, the big play guys, and did you feel like that was something kind of missing, an element missing a little bit last year? No, I never felt like it was missing, and I don't think we have a lack of toughness there. I think we've got good, tough players at that receiver position, and even in the, the limited things that Brandon has done, I see what Coach Prince is doing with him, and he's running routes in every part of the field. I think that's important that Brandon Coleman were able to take advantage of him in, in every situation, but you know, whether it's Brandon or Pratt or Ruhan Peel, yeah, uh, even some of these younger players who, who have flashed. And I thought Miles Shore had a great day today in the afternoon. And it wasn't only because of his catching the ball. I thought he did an excellent job of blocking in the run game. I did, thought he did some good, good things in special teams. So, uh, yeah, I think we've got a lot of players over there that can help contribute. And, and I, I certainly don't think there's a lack of toughness. How will you break up tomorrow? How long morning versus how long afternoon? It'll be a little under two hours for each practice. I think the morning okay. practice is at 8.30 and the afternoon practice is at 4.30. And what do you look for in the first double session? We'll be a, we'll be a little bit more physical, run oriented in the first one, and then in the, in the afternoon practice it'll be a little more pass oriented. We'll be in full pads in the morning, and then we'll be in shells in the afternoon. I think Savon is all of his cuts are smoother, yeah, and I think his reactions are, are more consistent. And those are the things that happen as you get reps. You know, Coach Prince is, is utilizing different aspects of the run game. You know, this offense is so inclusive. There, there are very few things you can't do in, in this offense. And every coordinator I've worked with accentuates different parts of it. And that's it's a little bit technical when you describe it that way. But I, but I think Savon's done a great job of, of 
really working hard through the offseason, working hard through these first five practices, and I think it's paying off from out there. Kyle, we saw Paul James rip off a couple of nice runs during the live session. Did, you know, is that sort of what you're looking for for a number two guy to have that sort of extra burst there? Yeah, I want to see. I want to see PJ do what we ask him to do. You know, right now, he's getting a chance to operate against the second defense, and he's having success. And the more success he has, the, the more opportunity he'll get to maybe play against the, the one defense a little bit. Kyle, what will, time for two more. What will uh, differentiate the guy that emerges as your punt returner from the rest of the competition? Hmm. Well, the first thing will be the, the guy we have the most confidence in of catching the ball. That's that's critical when you put that person back there. And, and then I think we got to decide as we get closer to the game what are what are going to be the individual roles of people. You don't want any one person to have to do everything unless you don't have an option. But I don't think that's the case for us. I, I've seen Karan Pratt go back there and, and really look good. I've seen Miles go back there and look good. I've seen Janarian Grant go back there and look good and, and some other guys. But those three for sure have, have gone back there and really look really look natural catching it. So now we'll have to see where they fit with all the other pieces of the puzzle and, and then make that decision a little closer to the game. When you say do everything, what do you mean by that? Well, if you didn't have enough talent, you might have to have the, the, your number one receiver be the punt returner, be the kick returner. You know, I, I don't think that'll be the case for us. I think Jeremy Deering will be a, a, an excellent kick returner for us. I think Miles will be back there with him the way it stands now, and then we'll have to see where they fit into the offense to decide ultimately who the punt returner would be. Kyle, how about we noticed Ian, Ian's ball skills, and you mentioned Toller a couple times. How about Glashen, a guy who's waited a long time to be a first-team corner? How's he looked in camp? Oh, I think Gree's Gr been very consistent so far. He's got excellent feet, and he's got the advantage of experience, and that's always a good thing when, when you're playing any position in football. But at corner, it'll help you read that quarterback a little bit faster. and. If there is three step in the, in the other team's game plan, I hope you read that a little bit and then you have a chance to really get some interceptions. Thanks, Carl. Thanks, Carl. Thank you.